Hey, what's up everybody? So in this video, I'm gonna talk about protons, neutrons, and electrons. And these are the three particles that make up nearly all atoms. Uh, protons and electrons are the building blocks of all atoms, and then neutrons are building blocks of most atoms. And we're gonna get into more uh, on that later. But these are just three subatomic particles. There's actually a lot more subatomic particles that do exist, and there's a few more that are actually thought to exist, but just haven't quite been proven yet. But for now, I'd like to just focus on these three. So before we get into the, uh, the properties of these three particles, I'd like to give you just a brief uh, history lesson. So if we go back all the way to the 4th century BC, this is the day of Aristotle and Plato, and these guys were the real players in philosophy. These guys were the guys that everybody respected, everybody listened to them, and they didn't, they didn't believe in atoms at all. They were convinced that all matter was composed of various combinations of earth, wind, water, and fire. And it wasn't until about 2,000 years later when John Dalton proposed his atomic theory that scientists became convinced that the atom was the fundamental unit of matter. And just less than 100 years after that, J.J. Thompson performs his cathode ray tube experiment and he actually proves that, uh, that subatomic particles do indeed exist and that the atom is not the smallest fundamental unit. So again, we have this really wide gap between not believing in atoms and proving the existence of atoms, and then a very small gap between the existence of the atom and the existence of subatomic particles. So it's pretty interesting stuff. So again, we're talking about subatomic particles here. So when we talk about subatomic particles, we're talking about particles that exist below the atomic level. They are smaller than atoms, and they are actually the building blocks of atoms, as I mentioned previously. And these subatomic particles are measured in what we call atomic mass units, or AMUs. And the AMU is defined as one twelfth of the mass of a carbon-12 atom. So a carbon-12 atom is composed of six protons and six neutrons. So uh, the general rule of thumb with AMUs is the mass of a proton, which is almost the same as the mass of a neutron, is approximately one AMU. So in this slide here, we have a table of the masses and the charges of all three of these particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Notice again that the mass of the proton is nearly the same as the mass of the neutron. If we look at the mass in AMU, the neutron is slightly heavier than the proton, coming in at 1.00866 AMU, and then the protons are lagging a little bit behind at 1.00727 AMU. Uh, but for most intents and purposes, uh, protons and neutrons have nearly identical mass. But if you take a look at the mass of the electron, the mass of the electron is much, much, much smaller by comparison. The mass of the electron is nearly negligible. So now I'd like to take a look at, uh, at the charges of these particles. The neutron has no charge. It is charge neutral. The proton has a charge of positive 1.60218 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. That's what this capital C stands for is coulombs, the SI unit for charge. Notice that the electron has a charge that is equal in magnitude to the charge of a proton, but it is opposite in sign. So usually protons and electrons are present in equal numbers and this is why most matter, most or all atoms are charge neutral. So this is why when you eat a bowl of cereal it doesn't shock you because there's just as much protons in there as there are electrons and they have equal but opposite charges so they cancel each other out. So those are the charges in coulombs and then uh, just kind of a quick thumb way to represent these charges is in relative terms and we say that the proton has a charge of plus one and the electron has a charge of minus one. So don't you know, get confused with this. When we say that the proton has a charge of plus one, we're not saying that the proton has a charge of one coulomb. We're saying that the proton has a, has a charge of one times whatever the elementary charge is, which is this guy right here, the 1.6 uh, times 10 to the negative 19 coulomb. So just keep that in mind. So if the, the question is, if all matter is composed of just these three subatomic particles, then what makes one element different from another element? And the answer is, it depends on the number of these subatomic particles. So when we're talking about elements, we're talking about uh, atoms that have a different number of protons. So the number of protons is what defines the element. And uh, the number of protons is also called the atomic number, which is given the symbol Z. 
So if we look at this, uh, this is sort of like a block of the periodic table here, and this is uh, the chemical symbol for beryllium, Be. And what makes beryllium beryllium? Well, the fact that beryllium has four protons, that's what makes beryllium beryllium. If we had any other number of protons, if we had five protons, that would be a different element. If we had three protons, that, would, that wouldn't be beryllium either. That would be a different element. So each element has its own unique number of protons in the nucleus of its atoms. And uh, another thing I'd like to talk about is what we call isotopes. And isotopes are what we are uh, actually atoms of the same element, but uh, they have unequal masses. And the reason why they have unequal masses is because they differ by the number of neutrons. So when John Dalton proposed his atomic theory, he said that all atoms of a given element have the same mass, but now we know that to be incorrect because we understand that there are different isotopes of the same element out there. So a, a good example of isotopes is the uh, three naturally occurring isotopes of hydrogen, which are protium, which has uh, one proton and no neutrons, deuterium, which has a proton and a neutron, and then tritium, which has a proton and two neutrons. And all of these, uh, protium, deuterium, and tritium, they all have one electron, so they're all charge neutral. They cancel out with that one proton, but again, they differ in the number of neutrons. So I'm gonna stop the video here, and uh, we're gonna talk uh, in more detail about isotopes later, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll just save that for another video. But um, all right, hope you learned something today, and have a good one.